Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 421 of the current situation. And with the state of alarm now over, it's fair to say that a lot of the population are extremely happy about that. And a lot of people took to the streets last night to celebrate as if there was no tomorrow. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your names here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the state of alarm or state of emergency here in Spain is finally over after six long months and people around the country celebrated last night as if it was New Year's Eve. As we can see here, thousands of Spaniards celebrating after the end of the state of alarm. Finally, we can enjoy life outdoors and not feel like criminals. Spain lifted this midnight the state of alarm in force since October and Spain decided to go out and celebrate. In many regions, the end of the state of alarm also meant the end of the curfew that had been in force for months. In Madrid, Barcelona, Seville, Valencia, Salamanca and many other cities, the excitement at the end of the state of alarm led to thousands of Spaniards to take to the streets to celebrate. I was fed up with not being able to go out. I felt frustrated, tied up, without freedom, shouted a young woman from Madrid last night. So finally we can enjoy life outside here in Spain and not feel like criminals, as said by one person there. So, what is the situation around Spain in this post-state of alarm period? As we can see here, the map of restrictions in each community as of the 9th of May, free mobility throughout the country, and curfew in four regions only. What can and cannot be done in each autonomous community after the state of alarm that has ended tonight? And if we have a look at a map of some parts of the country, for example, the Madrid community, we can see that there is no longer a curfew. Mobility is only limited to places with a high health risk. There's no limits on how many people can gather socially. But when it comes to bars and restaurants, they have to close at 12 midnight. And there's a limit of six people at outdoor seating areas and four people inside. And shops are allowed to stay open until 11 p.m. The curfew has also been lifted in Catalonia. There are no mobility restrictions in that autonomous community. Six people are allowed to gather. Businesses are allowed to stay open until 10 p.m. and restaurants and bars until 11. And there's a maximum of four people allowed per table. And in the Valencian community, the curfew does remain from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. But there are no mobility restrictions. 10 people are allowed to gather for social reasons. Bars and restaurants are open until 11.30 p.m. with a maximum of 10 people per table, both indoors and outdoors. And there's a 50% capacity limit inside. So that's what Spain looks like at the moment. 17 autonomous communities, 17 different sets of rules and regulations, especially when it comes to the opening hours for shops, restaurants, bars, and the like. There are no mobility restrictions in any of the autonomous communities, so people are free to travel wherever they want, when they want, but there are still curfews in place in four autonomous communities. So for example, if you travel to a place like the Valencian community where a curfew is in place, you have to adhere to the rules of that autonomous community. Now with the end of the state of alarm and people being able to travel around the country freely, the tourism sector are rubbing their hands with glee. As we can see here, springtime tourism after the state of alarm. Searches triple and summer bookings grow. The tourism sector is optimistic about this spring after the end of the state of alarm this Sunday. They are confident that mobility within the country will increase despite the fact that there are many uncertainties and it is not clear if there will be communities that will continue with the perimeter closure. The sector agrees that there is a contained demand that is waiting waiting for the restrictions to be lifted to be able to move around Spain. So domestic tourism looking as though it's going to experience a boom period from now on as mobility around the country will increase. There were some autonomous communities that tried to keep a perimeter closure, for example, the Basque Country, but that was rejected by the justice system, meaning that the whole country is now open. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see the accumulated incidence rate countrywide for the last 14 days, now sitting at 198. There were 8,186 new cases recorded on Friday, which is down 18% on previous data. There are currently 8,605 people hospitalized around the country with COVID, and there are 2,103 COVID patients in ICUs. There were 66 recorded COVID related deaths, which was down 5% on previous data. And when it comes to the vaccination campaign, we can see that data there is up 28% and 12.6% of the population have completed vaccination and 28% of the population have received at least one dose. Now we'll change the topic and talk about some of the tax increases that the government has planned for citizens here in Spain, starting with the plan to slap a toll on roads around the country. As we can see here, the government's toll plan, one cent per kilometre and compensation for haulers. The government 
government maintains its plan to impose tolls on all the country's highways in 2024, as promised to the European Commission. However, they are open to the idea of compensating hauliers and are looking at fixing a price of one cent per kilometre travelled, according to government sources consulted by RTVE.es. From the government, they insist that the model of toll highways is usual in European countries. In exchange for the payment for the use of high-capacity roads, Spain will receive 140 billion euros from the funds paid by all European citizens, said the Secretary of State for Transport, Mobility and Urban Agenda, Pedro Saura. And the government is also preparing a generalised increase in electricity, gas and fuels. The government is developing several reforms whose rollout will be staggered, which will cause an overall increase in costs for all citizens in the midst of the economic crisis due to COVID. So tolls on roads and generalised increases when it comes to electricity, gas and fuel costs here in Spain. And this, as we all know, is the economic cost of COVID-19. Instead of lowering taxes, which is what some other countries in Europe seem to be doing in order to get people to spend money to get confidence back in the economy, the government here in Spain is looking to increase taxes and make it more expensive to live here for the average citizen. Now, as you most likely know, the UK has published their traffic light system, which tells which countries are safe when it comes to travelling abroad from the UK. And unfortunately, there was bad news for Spain. As we can see here, alarm bells are ringing in the Canary Islands and Balearic Islands due to the new delay in the arrival of British tourists. The UK's decision not to consider Spain a safe destination will keep the primary tourist market for Spain away for another month. In a normal year before the pandemic broke out, more than 2.5 million British tourists visited Spain between January and March. This year, however, the same INE statistics reduced the figure to just over 55,000 and illustrate the collapse of what has traditionally been the major tourist market of origin for the Spanish economy. That is why there was so much interest in finding out yesterday whether the British government qualified Spain as a safe destination and lifted the restrictions on the number of tourists coming to Spain. So a setback there for the islands here in Spain with the announcement by the British government. But one part of mainland Spain considers itself a safe destination and wants UK tourists back there ASAP. As we can see here, Benidorm claims to meet the requirements to be considered a safe destination in the UK. The UK does not include Spain as a safe destination. Following the announcement, Benidorm says it meets the requirements to be considered as a green zone after the accumulated incidence of the coronavirus. To get Benidorm to be included, the town hall has exhibited the control data of the coronavirus pandemic in the city. The cumulative incidence at 14 days is 34.07 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. It is also stated that the incidence in the Valencian community is 40.99 cases. So is Benidorm a safe destination or not? That is the question. According to the Benidorm town hall, it is. But according to the British government, the whole of mainland Spain and the islands are not a safe destination. Will that change over the next month? We'll wait and see. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from JJ9Dev. Hello, does that mean that European citizens will be allowed to come to Catalonia for tourism as of the 10th of May 2021? Yeah, JJ, thanks for the comment. And as far as I know, the answer is yes. People are now allowed to travel freely around Spain. Citizens of Spain can travel freely and other European Union citizens are also allowed to enter the country. And in fact, that has been the case even during the state of alarm because international borders here in Spain were not closed. We saw a couple of months ago how people from places like France were flocking to cities like Madrid because of the freedoms that we had in this part of the world. And now that the internal borders here in Spain are open again, there are no restrictions. But I also think that some European countries are probably still going to recommend not traveling at the moment, considering that the health situation is not 100% under control in the European Union and some parts of Spain. So allowed, yes, but should you do it? That's up to you. One here from Sean, toll roads involve a lot of wasteful costs and wasted time in order to charge the tolls and increase the risk for less well-off drivers who choose to take secondary roads instead. There must be a better way of getting money out of motorists. Yeah, Sean, thanks for the comment and I agree with what you say there. Lots of wasteful costs and a waste of time to implement new tolls. And there is a high probability that people won't want to pay tolls 
and start to use secondary roads, which as we know can be more dangerous than the motorways and highways. I've seen it in Portugal where there is a high cost involved with using the roads there, and people do tend to use secondary roads in order not to pay. And those roads can be very busy and they can be very dangerous also. And you're right, there must be a better way than tolls, but the government doesn't seem to know what else to do. One here from Show Him in Bailey, so envious of your 18 and 23 degrees there in Spain. It's been sunny most of the week in South Wales, UK, but it was only two degrees when I left work yesterday morning and I had to scrape ice off my car. Love the videos as I'm missing Spain a lot. Yeah, thanks for the comment and the weather has been very good here lately, or at least in this part of Spain. Yesterday was a fantastic day, around 29 degrees, and there was also a nice breeze blowing, so it was quite pleasant sitting outside having lunch yesterday. But today's a different story, however, because it's raining, but the temperature's okay, around 18 or 19. But yesterday, as I said, was a fantastic day, and I think sun is forecast for the rest of the week. And when it comes to scraping ice off the windscreen, I haven't had to do that since February. So the weather hasn't been too bad over the last few months. One here from Guy. Hi, Stuart. What great news that you will continue to make videos once the pandemic is over. Looking forward to seeing your on the road pieces because you really seem to enjoy doing them and they're quite educational. Great to show off a country as beautiful and diverse as Spain, Mary and Montreal. Yeah, Mary, thanks for the comment and good to see that you are looking forward to me making more videos, especially travel videos. Now that the country has opened up again, I will no doubt hit the road in the near future and start showing people some of the beauty and diversity of this country. And you're right, I do enjoy making them and I'm glad that people find them useful. One here from George Galithia from the 9th of May have dropped the curfew and perimeter closures. Bars can open till 11 p.m. Restaurants till 1 a.m. Portugal, here we come. Also, Galicia has the most expensive road toll in Spain. Vigo to A Coruña is 20 euros for a one hour, 40 minute journey. 40 euros in tolls for a round trip to Ikea is just not worth it. Yeah, George, thanks for the comment. And I have seen that toll roads in Galicia are a bit of a problem. I remember many years back traveling around Galicia and we did have to pay a lot of money in tolls. And as I said a couple of minutes ago, those secondary roads can be quite dangerous in places like Galicia also because people don't want to pay the heavy tolls. And also, as you mentioned there, some good news for people in Galicia, no more curfews, no more perimeter closures, and you can go out and have a meal and enjoy yourself until 1 a.m. So I'm sure people are happy there. One here from Jose Antonio, it's finally ending and this might be El Acabose. El Acabose literally means the end, but actually means a total disaster in Spanish. There are still few people vaccinated in Spain, but hey, here comes the sun and COVID is a seasonal disease. We'll see how it turns out in Valencia after Madaleños arrive, for instance. Yeah, Jose Antonio, thanks for the comment and thanks for pointing out that word. I hadn't heard that word before, so it's a new one for me. And it is going to be interesting to see how the country handles these new freedoms. The place that you mentioned there, Valencia, for example, has a very low incidence rate compared to Madrid and lots of people from Madrid I know are going to start planning their holidays or weekends to Valencia in the near future. Lots and lots of people in Madrid have holiday homes in the Valencian community in places like Denia for example and I know that they are eager to get down there as soon as possible to check out those properties. So we will wait and see what happens from a health crisis perspective in coming weeks. And finally, one here from Peter. Any chance you'll be going to Valencia? Had to cancel my trip last year, but I'm planning on rebooking for next September. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Peter, thanks for the comment. I don't have any plans to travel to Valencia anytime soon. I am planning a few trips, but I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to go. I have received lots of suggestions from people in recent times telling me places that I should visit, places in the Valencian community that I should have a look at. But I think I'm going to stay relatively close to Madrid because until my son finishes school I don't have a lot of freedom to get out and about so I'll probably have to wait until the end of June until I take a lengthy trip away but I am open to more suggestions so please give me your recommendations in the comment section of places that you would like me to visit in Spain and I'll add them to my list. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.